What is going on everyone? My name is Anson and we're back with a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to teach you all how to handle slash commands. So in the last video of our Java Discord API tutorial, I only showed you how to create slash commands, but when you use them, they don't actually work. So how do we actually handle it in order for it to actually get stuff to work? Well, what we need to do is we need to actually handle the interaction create event. So in JDA, we can actually look for that real quick. So what I'll do is I'll actually do this. I'll create a new event. I'll call this uh, interaction event listener. And I think what I'll do is I will go ahead and extend the listener adapter. Just because it just provides a lot more uh, methods that we can override. And there's a lot of methods that we can override. And one of them is called on slash command interaction. So this would be for slash commands, right? In our case, we only have slash commands currently. We don't have anything else like drop menu, drop select menus, drop down menus. We don't have any modals. We don't have any buttons. But if we did work with those, we would have appropriate methods for them. Uh, we're only going to work with the on slash command interaction in this video. So let's click on OK. Let's override that method. OK. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just write a system out print ln. I'll just write a log and I'll just say interaction and I'll save. And let's just register this interaction event listener to our Discord bot. And we can do that by just simply passing in an instance uh, like this. So comma new and then interaction event listener like that. And uh, because we are importing all of the events from the events package using the wildcard uh, syntax, so we don't need to manually import every single event class that we create. Let's restart the bot. And let's just make sure that we can actually see that interaction event listener uh, working. Okay, so when we go ahead and uh, use a slash command, it should say interaction in the console. So watch this. So our bot is online. I'm going to go ahead and do slash and uh, let's go to Java bot. Let's do flashcards command. I mean, we only have uh, three commands. So let's do flashcards. And if we look in the logs, this is interaction. OK, that's great. How do we actually do more than just logging stuff? How do we actually, for example, respond to the user? Well, that's actually pretty simple. Really, really simple. What we do is we take this event object that you see over here. Okay, this is part of the method signature and the method has this event object and the type is a slash commit interaction event. And what you can do is you can do a lot of stuff, right? You can get specific properties and data. You can reply to the interaction. Uh, you can check to see if it was acknowledged. You can, uh, let's see, you can also reply with a file. You can reply with a modal. There's a lot of things that you can do. Let's do a basic reply first. So let's do event.reply. And we can just literally just send a string content. We can just say, hello there. Okay. And I don't think there are, I think there aren't any other properties that we could pass into reply, but I'm pretty sure I could call a bunch of methods such as set ephemeral, which means that only I will be able to see this message. So let's say that's true. And then finally, we just have to call the queue method and then we're done. So let's restart the bot and let's go ahead and run a slash command and let's see the interaction that is replied to us or let's see what the reply is. So let's go ahead and use the flashcards slash command again. And you can see it says, hello there, right? That's what we just did. We just literally replied to the interaction. That's great. So that's how you can reply to a slash command. Okay, but we have multiple, right? Like if you look at our code, we have created three slash commands. Okay, how do we actually ensure that each slash command uh, gets its own custom interaction? Well, that's pretty simple. So what we can do is on the interaction or on the event object, right? On the uh, slash command interaction event object, I can literally reference event. And what I could do is I can literally just call get, uh, I can literally call get command string. 
or yeah i think it's uh i think it's actually get name yeah i think it's get name actually these uh these names are weird but i can literally just call it get name and what will happen is that should give me the command name so watch this let's use this flashcards command again you can see it says flashcards if i were to go ahead and use uh the other slash command so we have quiz and slash cmd it's going to go ahead and log quiz if i were to use this slash cmd command same thing right it's going to go ahead and log the name of the command so we would call the get name method to get the actual name of the slash command so what i can do now is i can actually use an if else case or i can use a switch case whichever you prefer but let's use a switch case and let's use the condition to be event dot get name and it will set up cases so if the case is uh let's say if the command is flashcards right i'll go ahead and reply to the interaction by simply doing event dot reply okay and you can reply with a lot of stuff. You can either reply with embeds. You can reply with a string cons. You can do whatever you want. But I'll just reply with a string cons for now. I'll just simply say, here are your flashcards. And then if I need to call additional methods, I could, right? If I wanted to add components, I could do stuff like add action rows. I could add buttons. I could add embeds. I could do whatever I want, right? But we'll leave that alone for now. Let's just set the message to ephemeral. And let's queue. Let's call Q. And let's break. Okay. And again, I could do the same thing. I could handle the next case, right? What if the case is uh let's say we do quiz, right? I could do the same thing. Event I'll reply. Quiz command. Set ephemeral true. Q. And I can do the same thing for every other slash command, right? Let's do the last one slash hyphen cmd slash command and let's test these out let's look at the different uh, replies that we get and you'll see that that's how we can handle different types of interactions based on their name okay um cool so let's go ahead and rerun the bot bots online let's go ahead and test this out so let's do slash flashcards it says uh Let's see what's going on. Oh, whoops, my bad. I completely forgot to remove this event that reply part. So yeah, that's why I was throwing that error because we already acknowledged the interaction. We already replied to it already. Or I shouldn't say acknowledge, I should just say we already replied to it. So let's just remove that and let's restart. That's my bad. Try this again. So slash flashcards. See, it says here are your flashcards, slash, slash, CMD, slash command. And let's go ahead and do the last one, quiz, quiz command. See how based on each command name, each slash command name, it gives me different responses. That's because we used a logical structure like a switch case to do this. You could also use an if else case if you'd like, okay? But that is how you can handle slash commands uh, specifically chat input commands okay in later videos i'll teach you how you can uh, deal with modals you can create drop select menus all that kind of stuff so don't worry about that for now just understand the basic level of slash commands how you can reply to them and then play around with it you know make your own custom interactions so um that is going to conclude this whole tutorial thank you so much for watching if you need help with these tutorials feel free to join my discord server link is in the description so i'll see you all in my next episode Peace out.